Hey, how's it going folks? Today I'm going to show you how you can fix a transmission that's not shifting properly. And the vehicle we're working on today is going to be this 2001 Dodge Ram 1500. It's a 4x4 automatic transmission and a 5.2 liter V8 engine. And the symptoms we're having with this truck is that we cannot shift out of first gear no matter how much gas we give it. Alright, now luckily we do have a check engine light on this car. So we're going to scan that in a little bit with our cheap uh, scanner and hopefully the code we get will lead us in the right direction but before we do that we're going to check both the condition and the level of our transmission fluid now the way you check the transmission fluid level might be a little bit different from vehicle to vehicle but generally speaking you check it with the engine warm and idling and the transmission in either park or neutral all right actually here's a close-up shot of our uh, dipstick as you can see here's the max fluid level all right so let's start her up but i should say that you'll get a more accurate reading if after you start the engine you put the transmission into different gears and wait five seconds between each gear and then of course at the end put it back in park All right, so let's look at our transmission fluid. It's pretty pink. It's in a good color. It doesn't smell bad or anything. But as you can see, this is way overfilled. This isn't supposed to be here. It's way up here. This is way overfilled. Now, this isn't very uncommon. Usually when people have transmission or even engine problems, the first thing they do is just put some oil in it, thinking that's the issue. But what you really don't want to see is the color of the transmission fluid being dark. But you also want to give the transmission fluid the old taste test. <laughs> Wrong test. It's a smell test. I just looked it up in the manual. Ah, oh, it smells okay. Some say it's a bad sign if it smells burnt, but also if it smells simply bad, that's also a bad sign. It's not supposed to smell bad. All right, next let's use a little scanner to get the code for our check engine light. And of course the key needs to be in the on position for this. And as you can see, we got a P1756 and that seems to be the only code we got. Now, according to my repair manual, that's a transmission code. And the definition for that code is that governor pressure not equal to target at 15 to 20 psi and the part that's responsible for governing the pressure inside our transmission is this guy our governor pressure solenoid now the conditions under which this code will set is that when the governor pressure sensor output which is this sensor right here which is responsible for sensing the pressure coming out of our governor solenoid senses the output out of our governor pressure solenoid to be less than 15 psi or greater than 30 psi when the requested output out of this solenoid from our computer is between 20 to 25 psi. In so many words, the main culprit is going to be this governor solenoid, which is notorious for going bad on all these uh, Chrysler mid transmissions. Now, since in order to get to this solenoid, we need to drop the transmission pan, we're not going to just replace that, but rather the kit that you see here before you. I'm also going to go over some tips and tricks you can use when installing a new gasket so you don't have leaks from here later on. Now, if you have a Chrysler or a Dodge and you're having this issue, it's very important that you find out the code for your transmission. And for your convenience, I'll put some compatibility and information regarding that and also the kit and the tools I use in this video in the description box. So don't be afraid to click on them and check them out. All right, next, since we don't have a drain bolt on this pan, what I'm going to do is to remove these uh, five bolts on this end and then get our catch pan underneath here and catch all the transmission fluid that's gonna drip out of there. Here we go guys, we got it loose. All right, so after letting this drip for five minutes and then cleaning our face, we're gonna remove this pan. All right, next I'm gonna support this with one hand and then remove the last remaining two bolts. And then hopefully, I can maneuver this catch, this pan into my catch pan and not onto my own face. We'll see. And here's a look at our transmission filter. And this is held in by two bolts that are gonna require a T20 torque socket to remove. So here's a look at our pan. All right, next you're gonna have to use a scraper or some razor blades and remove as much of the old gasket material from the pan as you can. All right, next we'll clean everything up with some brake clean and these blue shop towels. By the way, these are awesome. I use them inside the house as well. It's super important the lip of this pan is completely clean and dry. Next, in order to address the areas where we have some bare metal showing, we're gonna spray those areas with some epoxy 
paint. I'm gonna cover the inside of the pan with this piece of cardboard so we don't get too much overspray inside this thing. Next, while we're waiting for this to dry, we're gonna go over to our transmission and do some cleaning there as well. And then once again, using your scraper, we're gonna have to clean this mating surface thoroughly. All right, so here's a look at the connector for our uh, governor pressure solenoid. We're gonna have to press out this tab and then pull this connector out. There we go. And then for the sensor, there's this red safety tab that we first need to pull out. You know what, it actually is gonna be easier to remove this uh, governor body first in order to get to this uh, connector for the sensor. And in order to remove this governor body, there's gonna be four, what looks to be 11 millimeter bolts and two T20 screws. This whole assembly should come loose. Yep. All right, so it looks like in order to remove this red safety tab, we need to first push up on this little clip on the bottom, and then at the same time, push this red tab out. There we go. And once this is out, we just press on this little black tab on the connector, and then pull this off. And here's a look at the gasket for our governor body. I'm not gonna touch this, it looks in good shape and it's stuck on there pretty good, so it should be fine to reuse. All right, so here's a look at the governor body out of the transmission. And it looks like the only thing keeping these two guys in place is this bracket on top. It's clamping down here and here. So we'll just pull this off. It should come out pretty easy. And then our governor solenoid should just slide off of this as well. Hey, look at this. I kind of half suspected this. So this is the intake to the, into this solenoid. As you can see, it's pretty much completely clogged up. So I guess this is sitting in like this. New transmission fluid comes through here, passes up, and then travels through the output through here. Goes to this side, this pressure sensor senses the pressure inside here, sends that to the computer, and then uh, from here, I guess goes out to the rest of the transmission. But since I found these cheap online, I'm not gonna risk it and simply clean this and put it back in the transmission, I'm just gonna replace it. All right, next we'll remove our sensor. Get some transmission fluid on the O-rings of our new solenoid. Put the bracket back on. Get some transmission fluid on our new sensor. Slide in our new sensor. And then line up our bracket with our sensor and push in our new solenoid until it clicks into place. Like that. And that's it, now we're ready to put this back on the transmission. All right, so the installation is gonna be pretty much the reversal of removal. We put this connector back in. Press in our safety tab, make sure it clicks in place. Reinstall our uh, connector for our solenoid. Next, we're gonna start all our screws and bolts by hand first. And then I'm just gonna run these down with my impact. I'm not gonna torque them, just gonna gently run them down. I'll torque them with my torque wrench. Especially with these screws, I might have even made a mistake. I really shouldn't have used my impact because you can strip the inside of these if you're not careful. So use a wrench. On these screws at least, don't use an impact like I'm doing. Do as I say, not as I do. And next, using my torque wrench, I'm gonna to torque these bolts down to 100 inch-pounds each. That's one. Two. Now, these screws are mainly here to keep down this uh, bracket, so I'll just torque these down to 40 inch-pounds, but you know, if you don't have a torque wrench, just hand tight is fine. All right, next up, our filter. Just make sure you get some transmission fluid on the seal. Once again, we run these in by hand. And again, hand tight is fine. All right, now we are ready to install our new gasket and our newly painted transmission pan. And I think this is where everybody's got questions about RTV or other sealants and how or if any should be used. All right, so if you're gonna be reusing your old pan, the odds are that it's not perfectly flat and even. Therefore, I always use some RTV. Especially in a case like this, since we had no other option to bend this in order to remove it from our transmission. But the key part is that you use the right RTV silicone, an RTV silicone that's made to be used in an automatic transmission. Because additives and detergents in your automatic transmission fluid will quickly eat away at other RTV silicones. And if you have a hard time finding this at your local auto parts store, I'll put links to where you can buy this online in the description box down below. And the way I put RTV silicone is just basically put a bead down in the center, go around every bolt hole, 
all the way around the pan on the pan side. So you never put it on the transmission side because you simply don't need it. See, this is a thick, flat piece of metal here and it's not gonna bend or warp due to the heat cycles or anything else. Now, if you're gonna be using a new high quality pan, then your problems are gonna be less. But I will still use just a tiny amount of RTV around the corners. That both helps seal it around the corners and it also holds in place our gasket. Because making sure this gasket is nice and flat on this pan when you go to install this is pretty much the most important thing when it comes to trying to avoid leaks. Also something else you should check before you put RTV silicone on this is that these bolt holes, the metal around it should be completely flat. Because sometimes people when trying to stop leaks will over torque the pan bolts and they'll bend the metal right around the bolt holes. And if you find out that's the case, you just get something flat underneath it and just gently tap it in and make it even. All right, let's get to it. All right, here comes the important part, laying down our new gasket. And you wanna make sure you lay it down nice and flat, well, as flat as you can. You just wanna make sure you uh, line up all the bolt holes exactly. That's the most important thing. All right, now we're ready to put this back on. So when I put this back on, I'm gonna run the two bolts on the sides down just by hand. So this is held in place. Now you don't want to run this down all the way that you can't move this just in case you need to make adjustments. All right, next I'm going to torque these down to about 6 foot-pounds or 72 inch-pounds. This is the same. And again, we're going to go from the center, center out, crisscross manner. All right, next I usually like to wait an hour before I torque the bolts down to factory spec. And I think the torque spec for these bolts on this car is uh, 13 foot pounds. And now we do our final torque down, again working from center out. All right, next we're just gonna wait another two or three hours, or better yet, let this sit overnight, and then we're gonna refill with new transmission fluid. Now, according to the repair manual for this car, when you drop the pan and replace the fluid and filter, you're only replacing about one and a half quarts of transmission fluid, so that's how much you would need to add back into this transmission. All right, next we get in our car, start the engine, and get the car up to operating temperature, and then we run the gear selector through all the gears, waiting about five seconds between each gear, and we do this twice. After that, we'll check our transmission fluid level and add more transmission fluid if necessary. And then we'll check for leaks around our transmission pan and I don't see any, so we're good there as well. All right, now all that's left to do is to go on a test drive and see if we fixed our shifting issue. All right, here we go. We're in first gear now. That was second gear. I don't believe it. That was a really smooth shift. Let's get it up to third. Still in second. Now we're in third. Wow. We got really nice smooth shifting now, guys. Now in this case, we were lucky that we were able to get the code with that little scanner, but a lot of times you need a more advanced scanner to read the codes from the transmission control module in your car. And it's very important because that's how you're gonna be able to properly diagnose your transmission issue. And with that said, gonna wrap this up. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you might want to check out these other related videos of which I put links to on this side of the screen and also links in the description box down below as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.